Hi folks and welcome back to the channel my name's Adam thank you for clicking on this video and welcome to episode one of Westy Weekly Hi folks welcome to episode one of Westy Weekly it's the 24th of January it's about 6 30 a.m at a four o'clock start this morning over to Bromborough to collect a load for East London I'll let you have a look at the load now it's a uh, just a typical load of rebar I've shown you one of these before all strapped on it's got the fall arrest system up um, there's 24 and a half tons of rebar so I'm expecting it to be Bromley by boat it's going to East London I'm expecting it to be quite a, a long offload maybe a couple of hours I've been there before and it's um, they take the time, to say the least. Truck's nice and clean again, as you can see. I give it a a good wash when I got back on um, on Saturday. Wash lad wasn't there, so I had to do it myself with the driver's wash. So it took me a good 45 minutes to get it looking res uh, respectable again. So uh, we'll get heading down. And when I get down to uh, the drop stick the camera back on and uh, we'll show the offload in the usual way arriving at site now you see the three tower cranes in front of us uh, we just had to come up off the A12 onto Ball Roundabout to access the site Ball Roundabout is where the A12 and the A11 meet and we've got to follow this uh, this little access road in here to the site if you stay on the main A um, A12 there's no access to it you just go straight past it made that mistake the first time I came down it's just that building there at the back of the Tesco Different ways to get you in here. I can turn left and go in a gate on the right hand side as I've turned left, or the gate straight in front of us. They mine uh, reverses back, turn us round, and reverses in that gate. We will soon find out. Right, so we've arrived on site, um, Bromley by Ball. We've not done too bad, not too bad of a run down considering um, we had to be here for 12 and uh, obviously we had to, we got here at 20 past obviously we had to get over to um, over to Bromba, start at 4 do all our daily checks and then get a trailer get to Bromba which is about an hour and 15 from the yard so you're leaving the yard about half past 4 you're not getting to Bromber till quarter to six and then drop and swap trailers and get it all ready to um, ready to go 
and then get down here to just like south of Stafford, aren't you, at Bromley by Ball, just north of the um, Blackwall Tunnel. Any further south, and we'll be going through the Blackwall Tunnel. So, not if we've had a bad run down, we had to get a 45 minute break on the way down. Not too bad. So, we're just waiting game now, they're not quite ready for us, so. It's a waiting game, and then after this, we're going to hopefully, if nothing changes, we're going to Tilbury for a load for Rochdale. So we should get that, get this tipped, get that on, and uh, get parked up somewhere, set up to get going bright and early in the morning to get to Rochdale.
we're empty four hours just over four hours and I said this morning that um, usually takes a while to get offloaded um, but four hours is a bit uh, <laughs> mind you it's nothing compared to the construction steel I've had 9, 10, 11, 12 hours waiting with that construction steel but usually not four hours two to three hours normally with this um, reinforcement bar uh, once they got on it probably only a couple of hours two and a half hours maybe I was probably about an hour and a half waiting outside so plans have changed slightly now we're not going to get the Tilbury load on tonight so we're going to Gateway instead to load in the morning to go and do a changeover. I haven't got the full details yet, it's just what I've been what I've been told to do is to head for Gateway if I can get there tonight, park in there tonight. I'm just gonna try and time it. If I can get parked up without using a 15 hour day, I will do. If I go over the 15 hour day. The only place to park really now from here would be parking. I'm just heading now towards the uh, the A13. So traffic's hammered. As per usual at this time of day. So if I can get parked up at parking before gone over a 13 hour I'll park there if I've gone over I might as well make my way into Gateway and park inside there for the night jumpers wind me up there we go here's another one come on you are proper taking the Michael you can't believe that clear road ahead nobody will let him in either that wouldn't that make him sit there London for you. Every man for himself. Every man for himself down here. <laughs> Depends what the traffic's like when we turn on here. We get down here and past the 4 or 6 without too many problems. We might be on for the winner, but normally, as soon as you get through this bit here at Canning Town stops with its stop start then all the way through past the 4 or 6 yeah, I've said it many a time you can't uh, you just can't judge traffic coming in and out of London it's impossible one day is totally different from the next and even, you know, Monday at this time now compared to Monday at this time next week 
can be totally different. Today, at this time at quarter to five, can be totally different to what it'll be tomorrow at quarter to five. You just can't judge it, it's just one of them I'm afraid, you just gotta uh, get amongst it and see what happens. Doesn't look like we're doing too bad though. Clearer than it normally is. Kitchen while you smoke outside You're careful not to let the smoke inside I always tell you it's poison I know it helps to take the edge off the day We get the drink before it's closing time The one on high street with a blinking sign All this man was feel poignant I won't be there to see the snow melts away I've been gone on business I gotta make some money I really feel the distance And I'm crying myself And I miss you telling me To leave my shoes at the door Cause you just wrapped the floor And it third drives you crazy And I'm crying myself Cause it feels like poetry When the rain falls down on the window I you're in my arms and I watch in the TV Yeah, I cry and miss home Yeah, I cry and miss home I smell your cooking from the living room And then I tell you that I love your food I know it doesn't come easy but you know it reminds me where I'm from Oh, I'm in another city I got nobody with me And it just really hit me And I'm crying myself And I miss you telling me To leave my shoes at the door Cause you just wrapped the floor and it it drives you crazy And I'm crying myself Cause it feels like poetry When the rain falls down on the window I go in my arms See now watching the TV Yeah, I cry in this home Yeah, I cry in this home Yeah, I cry in this home Quite miss home. Well, that <laughs> was skin of the teeth. I literally got here with about 30 seconds to spare. Morning, folks. It's Tuesday, the 25th of January. Um, set off at 6 o'clock this morning. It's now 2 minutes past 7. Uh, we're just waiting now at Gateway to get loaded, lads have just turning up now just making myself a brew um, I'm going to get my fall arrest system down <laughs> I've been sat in here being lazy, I should have got it down but it's not this actually well, it is cold but it's not it's actually four and a half degrees so it's not that bad it just feels a bit cold out there but I'm going to get out anyway and get this fall arrest system down um, so they can get me loaded They'll probably be another 10, 20 minutes yet anyway before they start loading. And then we'll uh, head up. Still don't know when I'm doing my changeover. But I'll give them a ring. Not got anything through yet. I'll give them a ring once I'm... Uh, they'll just be coming in in office anyway. Once I'm loading, I'll give them a ring. I'm guessing rugby 
something like that around that area and then we'll uh, head down to the HS2 site get that tipped and then we'll be into Tilbury all going well to get our collection for Rochdale that we should have been collecting last night kettle's boiling a watch pot never boils that's what they say innit that is the saying I tell you what my legs are still killing after doing that 5k run push myself <laughs> from the truck to 5k I don't think you're supposed to do the 5k in one there's a little uh, little kettle does the job for me though Cup of coffee this morning. Fancy the coffee. Put it on there. Batteries. Great. I'll get my father a system down and then go and see him and uh, let him know what I'm loading. Get it loaded, get on our way.
All right, this is loaded. Loaded and ready to roll. I've had a missed call. I presume it's off uh, the lad I'm doing a changeover with. I also had to uh, shunt a trailer for about the way. One of my colleagues had come and dropped a tort liner in the wrong place. So that had to be shunted out of the way. Right, we're on our way out of uh, Gateway now. Going up to meet um, Stuart. He, uh, he's one of the day lads. Meeting him. We're thinking um, rugby. New motor services at Rugby at Junction 1 of the M6. So I reckon I'm about two and a quarter from there, something like that maybe. It will be much more than that. Alright, we'll get up to rugby then, we'll meet Stuart there, see what he's got for us. No idea what product he's carrying, I didn't ask him, should have him really. Could be anything for an HS2 site. Be some sort of construction uh, product. So we'll get up there anyway, I'll crack on. Try and get up there before 11 o'clock, hopefully. It's half past, it should do, it's half past eight now. Get changed over with Stuart and then make our way to the uh, delivery point. Okie dokie folks, we are just leaving rugby now, done the changeover with Stuart. Tell you what, it's cold out there when you, <laughs> when you stood having a chat for a few minutes. Thought I might as well get me 45 in while I'm there, so we're just chatting. Driver talk, as you do. But it's cold when you're um, two degrees now, so it's actually dropped. What was it four and a half when we were down at Gateway? So it's dropped a couple of degrees. <laughs> it's dropped a couple of degrees. What's this like going here now? Like it in there, isn't it? Yeah, it's dropped a couple of degrees, so um, it's a bit chilly when you're out there doing doing nothing but chin but chin wagging. So this uh, load has been collected from the Brombra site where uh, where we was yesterday. So Stuart's gone in there, headed in there first thing this morning and collected it. And obviously we were down at Gateway. We met up at Rugby. He's off up to Warrington to get rid of his uh, paved stone. And I'm off down now to, um, it's actually a slip road of the M25 that they've put in between 16 and 17. There's a slip road that's been purposely put in for this HS2 massive site. It's absolutely massive. Um, for this HS2 job. So I've done this site a couple of times before. I will have to put a fall arrest system up. Which um, I have. I've got the porter in. I'll have to put the excuse me, I'll have to put the strap through, which I'll do when I get down there, while I'm waiting outside. Come on dear, come on, you alright? Come on. <laughs> I know I'm caught in lights. <laughs> Just didn't realise I was letting her go. Just at that look of snow. Not look, look to the forecast, but um, it's about that right temperature as well, and it just has that look. I don't think the clouds are that low, to be honest, but it just has that uh, grey look to the sky that it could snow. Hi 
guys, we're just joining the M6 now. Get down, M6, M1, M25. And then when we're making our way around to the slip road, bob the camera back on and uh, we'll have a look at site access. And let you uh, have a look at the site as we drive through. You'll be able to uh, judge the scale of the site as we drive through to our offloading point. Which last time when I did it was right at the end of one of the big tunnels. Huge tunnel. Yeah, I'll put a picture up now so you can, uh, you can see where I offloaded last time. This picture was taken by, I don't know if it was a member of the press or if it was just somebody, I think it was just somebody that um, works there that um, is overseeing the HS2 project and I think it was put on the Twitter page or something like that. And Boris Johnson retweeted it, and it's a picture of my truck. And you can just about make out me sat in it. Yeah, and Boris had retweeted it, and it made its way then onto LinkedIn and our workplace site and stuff. But I'll bob that picture up, mate. And I'll uh, carry on. Get myself down there. Yeah, we're just coming off now on this um, purpose built slip road. Normally, I'll be parking just here, so I might just pull over and check with them. This is where I've parked before, anyway, just on this hard shoulder bit here. No, it wants me to come round. Moving me around, so we'll go around. Yeah. You know where you go? No. You start going do, do not that to conquer and go in the The far one, yeah. Right. From the fourth right to right, glory holding. Lorry holding, no yeah. problem. Fourth right, second right, for the glory holding. Yeah. Okay, thanks Thank very you. much. That's changed a little bit now. Got a lorry holding area by the sounds of it. Second right, right again into the lorry holding. say the scale of this site is something else oh, he's coming out the wrong way I think spinning him around it must be one way thank you First call, yeah. And I need to send it to the logistics because this is not right the way they designed. I know definitely you won't be able to, but do it. Uh, I want to see it. Let me go on this time. Okay, yeah. It's going to video me now to see if I can uh, spin round into this box. He said it. He doesn't think I'll be able to do it. <laughs> Let's see if we can prove him wrong. Prove his little video wrong, shall we? But he's probably right. He did probably can't be done. It's going to be tight anyway. Pull out and reverse 
us into it is the only way of doing it. into the area of the site we want. We're not really going to touch on the scale of this site, the size of it. We're just staying up the top end. see down there you obviously you can't see it on camera but I look to my left now and, uh, as far as the tree line which is a good I don't know what might say half a mile away <laughs> is the end of the site Going in that one. be nice I mean really this is a tip for anybody <laughs> always jump out and ask them exactly where they want you because they just don't tell you and then expect you to uh, guess or adjust the final minutes
Put in. Cheers. Yeah, just a little tip. <laughs> Always ask exactly where they want you. Jump out and have a look. Saves the shunting backwards and forwards when you're not in the right position anyway. Hi folks, it is now five past five, uh, we've managed to get tipped, uh, another three hour tip or so, something like that, I don't actually know if I managed to get a split brake on then, I'll have to check, do a quick print out and see if I did, um, but yeah it was a good three hour tip that, so it's now five past five, not going to get the load out of Tilbury on again it's going to be too late time I get over there it'll be half past six they'll be gone so we're going back to London Gateway but this time we are going to park in there overnight and we're, one of my colleagues Malcolm is coming down to meet me uh, we'll be swapping trailers with him and we've got a 7am Bishopsgate in the morning so I've got to get that in there in the morning just have a quick check oh yeah Three hours, 13 minutes. So we've had a split break, so that'll do. So I can get over to Gateway. I didn't start till six o'clock this morning. If I get over to Gateway, probably be about half past six, quarter to seven. 
So that will only be, like we talked about yesterday, a 13 hour day, but I will reduce down and probably leave at four o'clock in the morning just to make sure I can get within striking distance of this site because it's time critical. It has to be there at seven so you can get inside um, without having any uh, issues regarding offloading and residents there's sort of like a bit of a time you either in there at seven i think you get to about 20 past seven if i'm honest after that it's nine o'clock um and we're going around to croydon so i'll get this trail off mount tonight and get myself around to croydon earlier doors so i'll reduce down like i said but i won't use a 15 so I'll still have three left so that'll be Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, 3.15s, that'll do for me. Love it when it works out like that, because I don't have to worry now. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I don't have to worry. I just do whatever they want me to do, smash my 15s, and then see what happens Friday, whether we get back or whether we're running in Saturday. So I'll get over to Gateway, put you on when we get over there. We're back on, folks. We've got to London Gateway now. Um, just done a change over with Malk. It's quarter to eight now. Got here about ten to seven. Done done the change over then just been chatting with Malk. Malk's one of the old boys, the old school lad, 72. 72 and still trucking. <laughs> Good luck to you, Malk, but I hope I'm not doing that 72. He doesn't need money neither, he just lost his wife a good few years ago, obviously. No one at home, no kids at home, so comes in and grafts, no wrong with that. He was owner driver when I started, he'd been an owner driver for years and years. Pulling for Bob Swain, pulling Bob Swain's trailers for donkeys, God knows how long. Um, and then when he got somewhere up near retirement age and his truck re needed replacing, he just come up books for, for Swain's and has been ever since. And still going strong. <laughs> and he doesn't shy out and out neither, you know what I mean? If there's out and he's doing, his mouth's there. He'll not play the you know, he'll not say, oh no, I don't want to be doing that anymore now. He's he's up and he's doing it. Steel, sheeting, into in and out of London, whatever it is, Malk will do it. So he's gonna go and collect the load that I've been down for collecting for two days that's going up to Rochdale because obviously they'll be desperate for the stuff they won't want to wait another day for it to be collected um, and I'm not going to Croydon Mount was originally told it was going to Croydon um, I'm going into Bishopsgate quite a anal sight and Mount got himself banned <laughs> because uh, he, he, the site agent there is well put it this way he's probably the worst person I've met on this job in 15 years of, of working at Swain's on on this type of a uh, flatbed site work he's the worst person I've met he's an horrible guy but so Malk's fell out with him so he's banned him off site so that's why Malk can't go and do it so we'll go and get rid of this got to be there at seven so I'm going to get up at four and get going we'll go and get rid of this and then we might be back in here, we might be um, going to Tilbury, but we've got the customer's trailer on, so whatever we do, at some point, we'll be going back, dropping this trailer off at one of the customers. Got different premises, Bury, um, Scarborough, Grantham. Grantham's the main one that we use, or it could go into one of the painters at Scalmsdale or St Helens, something like that. One of the uh, one of the painters who paint the steel for them. So whatever we do, we'll be getting rid of this trailer at some point tomorrow, I imagine, or certainly Thursday. Unless we go, we might go straight back to Grantham and come back down with some. You never know. <laughs> that's the beauty of this job. I think that's what I like about this job. You never know what you're doing from one day to the next. Don't get me wrong. Recently last couple of years we've not got as much variety as we used to have in the job you know there was a lot more variety and going back 
when I when I first started, Jesus, for the first five, six, seven years, you were doing everything and anything proper. Like I mean, general knowledge is is what it says on the tin. It's just anything and everything. Now we seem to be a lot more concentrated, especially over these last couple of years, on a certain set of customers and and London deliveries really. Because of being Fours Gold and because of having Thames Tideway and Suds, which is safe, urban, driving certificates and all that that the drivers have got and obviously the trucks have to be specced to carry a Fours Gold um, accreditation. The trucks have to be specced up in a certain way with cameras and mirrors and warning signals and all sorts of things like that and stickers. And, and then the drivers, have we have to complete training separate from your normal training of your cpc we have to do separate training courses electronic training courses nothing e-learning is the correct the correct word for it we do these e-learning courses but for the safer and driving certificates we did classroom work and cycling actually going out cycling and things like that because that's all about keeping cyclists safe around urban areas and around cities like london um, obviously we've done cross rail training, Thames Tideway training, so we trained on their sites. Um, and then we keep up with our e-learning to keep our fours gold. So London really is premium for a company like Swain's. Premium loads, premium money. So we do a lot of it. And it, a lot of drivers don't like that. And to be honest, I, I miss the variety. I miss getting up to Scotland, you know, getting down south wales getting down the southeast uh sorry the southwest we seem to be down the southeast all the time and up and down up and down but you get used to it but like i said the, just the variety has dropped off hell of a lot from what we used to do but you know i still love the job so long may it continue and, and this now having our own sites like this one and the one they're building next door where we decant our own, um, what's it, like paved stone and it's blocks next door and then we're going in heavily into like um, bricks and things like that. It's different, but you've always got a back load where you're loading from here. When it gets busy, we'll be in here all the time. It'll be tip London into Gateway, straight back up. And the loads are in, it's your lads loading you, so it's quick, There's no messing about, you're in, you're loaded. You're getting away, and as they say, the wheels have got to be turning for you to be earning, especially on my pay scheme, so I love it. And I get paid more money for going for tipping trailers in London. Um, the waiting time, we get paid for that. And I'm like, you've noticed these past couple of days, I've been waiting um, four hours on one side. Well, four hours on both sides, really. Last week, I had a with that sheeting job when it went wrong with the sheets had like a seven hour sheeting job so it's all over the place with the waiting time but it's it's good it's good the money's good when you're waiting about you're still collecting your other bonuses but you're also collecting demerage so the truck earns it and i get a percentage of it so london is uh good in that way for earning but I know I do miss some of the runs we used to get up top of Scotland and up to Aberdeen and then across to Fort William, pick up out of the sawmill and back down. I used to love them jobs. But they'll come again. Swings and roundabouts, innit? They'll come again. You know, these contracts will end and then, you know, we'll end up with other contracts that di dictate so that's where we're going. You know, Crossrail, Thames Tideway, things like they're going to come to an end. You know, they will be complete, HS2 is the new one now that we've all done stuff for and got induction cards for. And we're all booked in now on systems. Gone away with like showing cards and all that. You just ask you your name and details. You've got details of your truck and it's all on the system on their iPads now on the gates. But, um, you know, that will come to an end. Tem ties where will be done. Crossrail will be done. And so will, um, so will the HS2 site. So the call for us coming into London will drop. There'll still obviously be the steel for the construction side of things. They're always throwing buildings up everywhere, aren't they, in London? But things will change. Anyway, I'm going to get my tea. What are we having? I think we're having beef in black bean sauce. 
Oh, we're moving on Weight Watchers stuff here. <laughs> I'm seriously at it now. I've tied a bit more Weight Watchers. I've tied with it for a few weeks. Or a month or so, the idea of getting back in shape, but now I'm on it. Hey, I beef in black bean sauce. That's probably the most un unhealthiest meal I've got in here, but I like it. I fancied it. So, no Greggs. On my cereal and my berries. <laughs> Raspberries. Blueberries. Yogurts. Gut health. No added sugar, no fat. Activia. We'll have a yogurt. After, we'll have a yogurt after tea. All right, I'm going to sign off. That is the end of day two of Westy Weekly. So, up bright and early. Four o'clock start for day three. And we'll get into London. See you in the morning, bright and early. Bye for now. Good morning folks, welcome to day 3 of Wesley Weekly, Wednesday the 26th of January, it's now 20 past 5, um, we didn't start at 4, would have been way too early, so we're starting at 5, done my checks and pulled out here where it's a bit lighter, but I'll bob the camera on, uh, we're going to make our way into London, Bishopsgate, um, down the A13, once we get close, uh, stick the camera back on and you can see the way in and uh, driving into sight and then obviously we'll bob the camera up on the back there's not a lot of steel on this at all there's about four lifts five lifts so we shouldn't be there too long uh, I'm not sure what we're doing after that hopefully there's some on the app after seven o'clock when the office get in so we'll get on route plenty of time to get in it's only about 50 55 minutes an hour say an hour and up there's a touch of traffic on the way in from here so still gonna be early there's a little parking spot just before we get in there um, Bevis Marks right near Mitre Square and if we can park there we'll have a walk around we'll have a walk into Mitre Square have a look where one of uh, Jack the Ripper's victims you know, was sadly uh, mutilated. It's funny though, because I don't think there's anything there. There, was, there wasn't last time anyway, but it has been like done up since they put the big uh, building up, Bevis Marks building up. But there was never like any plaque or anything to say what had happened there. But. get on because it's uh, not nice driving with a light on really it's going to be too dark when I turn the light off bring on these uh, nice light mornings when you're getting up at 4 o'clock and it's light love that period of the year only if we only get a few, a few weeks of it really start to see it go the other way you know just around um, before the longest day and things like that for me well, maybe a month where you know between four and a half past is light and it's still light till about half ten at night. I like that. I do like that period of year, especially for this job. But for everything, it's just brilliant. But the mornings are definitely getting lighter. You stay in that bit lighter at night, definitely noticing that anyway. Definitely noticing it's staying a bit lighter at night. But we'll be into February next week, won't we? Flying by. <laughs> Wishing our lives away. That's one thing being a, being a biker is you just tend to want to wish this part of the year away. You put your bikes away, you just... Um, that shoot. 
waiting for March, April to come around so you can get them back out again. Right, that's our crack on. Probably back on in about an hour. Bye for now. We're just getting down now into the uh, nitty gritty of London. Well, heading in anyway. Just come over the A12. Blackwall Tunnel in Canary Wharf is to our left. You're not going to be able to see it. We're on the A13, so can't really see it from here, but <clears throat> it's just to the left of us. carry on down down the A13 to where it um, meets the A11 Whitechapel Aldergate area and like we said we um, head up Bevis Marks to the top which brings us up to Bishopsgate turn left at the lights of Bishopsgate and the sites there on the left quite a straightforward easy one to get into quite a tight uh, pit lane where they, where we offload high scaffolding each side and we're hoarding one side scaffolding the other side it's quite tight you've not got much room you've got to be careful when you go in there you're not catching your mirrors or anything but other than that it's an easy job and they'll position us where they need us and then um, get out and get the chains off there's a broken down car at the uh, traffic lights there at Barking just as you want to turn left at River Road Industrial Estate it's probably added five minutes or so on to journey Coming up on the sat nav was an accident. A uh, police car come down and he sort of sorted it out then, got the traffic moving over out the way and when I got there it was a uh, broken down car, he had his tow rope already attached to the front of car, ready for be towed out of the way. <laughs> broken down, must have come to a stop at lights and then it's not got going again. I've got diesel level low warning on, so <laughs> I better be careful. I'll be breaking down. But I can fuel it barking. And if I'm heading up, well, whichever way I'm heading, I can get fuel at barking. If I'm heading north, I can jump back up 406. But it's nice running into London at this time of morning. It's not too busy. You can get in. Yeah, but got to be careful of which route you take before 7 a.m. because of the lorry van areas. It's quite a complicated um, scenario, the, the lorry van. You can use the lorry van if you have a reason to be going in to London at that time. But what you need to do is plan your route so you use the shortest amount of the lorry van but which could mean your journey into London is two or three mile longer than it would be if you took the direct route which to me doesn't really make any sense when you're talking about trying to make London green and well you know trying to reduce your carbon footprint and uh, and all that you know anyway but I can understand from a residence point of view that you don't want trucks trundling past your front door all hours a day and night. Lorry band comes into effect at 9pm at night and then runs till 7am in the morning. And then, don't quote me on this, but Saturdays, I 
think it's from 7am in the morning up until maybe 1, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And then Sundays, the lorry van's in effect all day Sunday. Which means obviously you can still come into London on a Sunday, but you stick into the main routes in. Like this A13 and the A11, they're both main routes in. It's only when we come off this A13 will we enter in to the lorry van area. Um, which then would obviously mean we'd have to look at if you're going to an area within the lorry van which would which artery main artery road would take you the closest to your delivery point before you have to go into a lorry van so if that means going all the way around the m25 and coming in down the a1 even if you're at Kent, then that's what you'd have to do but it's a it's a bit of a complicated one For me as a lorry driver, I'd much prefer the lorry van to be flipped round. <laughs> the trucks are only allowed in from 9 till 7 in the morning. But obviously if you're a resident of London, and you think about, you know, these being houses here on our left. And like I say, this is... Um, main route in but if you're coming like round you're coming round Kensington and places like that where you're just constantly passing residential coming through residential areas I can understand why you're there not going to want trucks coming in there at, uh, at that time of the morning you notice a couple of trucks here parked now this red route um, is from 7 a.m. till 7 p.m. so these little laybys that you see can where these trucks are now he'll be waiting now probably till after seven so he doesn't um, pick up a lorry van fine he's obviously delivering to the Tesco but this other a scaffolding lad here will be doing the same obviously depending on his booking time his booking time might not be till half past seven so if he or even eight o'clock depending on where he's going so if he waits it out there till last minute till seven he knows he's not, not going to go into the lorry van area too early. For me, I've got a seven o'clock booking, so I have no choice. If I wait here now till seven, I'm going to be late. The fancy shoey helmet with lights on it. stickers the strips that he's put on himself that um that thing on the top of his helmet is obviously the quite smart that to look into that it looks <laughs> not just for it looking pretty cool but for safety reasons as well So this here now we're entering onto the A11 at Aldergate, the Whitechapel area. Just to the right, you'll not be able to see it. Called Jack, Jack the Chipper. <laughs> There's quite a few uh, what's it like that round here. Um, there's a barber's called Jack the Clipper. You know things like that. Quite a few references to uh, to Jack the Ripper in this area. Where uh, there's Old Gate Station or Old Older Gate, Older Gate. However you pronounce it, it must be Old Gate.
and then to um, red tower cranes, you can see the tips of them, red dots, if you can see them on the camera, well, that's four of them actually isn't it? <coughs> the ones in the distance will be Lednall Street, the Lednall Street cranes. Here's one of my colleagues coming out now. Looks like he's probably done lead and all last night, or possibly Bishopsgate. I'll let you stop overnight at Bishopsgate, so he's probably done Bishopsgate. Mr. Willits, Mark Willits. <laughs> Tell you what, this is awkward here as well. Even more so when you've got bleeding. If you have an extender on, you have to cut it right in here, not to catch the curves. The awkward thing. Yeah, there was a Henderson's lad coming in there once with an extender on, ripped two tyres off. You've got no choice but to run over the kerb with an extender. You just have to try and do it slowly <laughs> and not rip the tyres off. Oh well. Can't park in our normal little spot, which is here where they've got the road dug up. Just have to park here and try and hold here for uh, 10 minutes. Right, it's time to head in now. Five to seven, so got away over a few minutes parking there. Should be good timing. The colleague rung me, Mark, and said, "Oh, you'll be all right going in. Go straight in." But <clears throat> I don't know. I've been here before, just before seven, and they've made me go round the block, or they've made me stop just outside, and do normally when you stop outside here on this um, Bishop's Gate get moved on by the traffic warden so we'll see hopefully now with just a couple of minutes they'll let me in look very tight but it is you know you've not got a lot of room with your mirrors maybe you know six inch either side We're in position. Back 
on again YouTube <laughs> sorry about that <laughs> I guess you've just seen 12 seconds of um, <laughs> of the offload camera fell must, must have stuck it down properly so the camera fell off the pod <laughs> and I've got four minutes four minutes 19 of it stirring well there's four minutes 19 of recording 12 seconds of I'm just getting on the back and getting ready to offload and then the uh, other four minutes and seven seconds of it just stirring at the uh, airlines <laughs> I should have checked I stuck it down quite well but like I normally do useless we'll get there at some point with this recording if you notice some, uh, some of my first videos I had two cameras working at the same time the other one is mounted on the front of my bike motorbike I need to uh, I need to take it off and bring it in so I can give that view again where when I'm talking to you sometimes if I'm if I'm just showing the road and you can't see me it's probably not that great viewing really so next week I promise both cameras well in fact I've got the camera it's a, the um, it's the mount that's mounted to the bike but maybe I can do something with what I've got here I'll have a look I've got um, maybe maybe there's a chance of putting something together so I can show both views I'll have a look when I stop I'm making my way to back to Gateway where we stopped last night for a load of paved stone that's going up to Darlington so I'll have to work out times when we get loaded fair way up to Darlington got time to do it today only problem is is what time they close what time I can actually get tipped at whether I can make it up there I have to get some fuel so realistically nah we're not going to get Realistically, after fueling up, it's going to be around 10 o'clock when we get into um, Gateway. Leaving there at 11. It's got, got to be, no, we won't get to Darlington. We will get to Darlington tonight. But unfortunately, it'll be short by the time we get up there. Just these builders' yards, you know, come half past three, four o'clock, that's the cutoff. And I imagine Darlington's got to be got, got to be a good six hours drive, hasn't it? Well, we're, including a break as well. Now we'll, we'll get up there on our time tonight, but that'll be us. We'll be um We'll be tipping that in the morning. Well, I'm saying that, if we do tip it could end up getting a changeover coming back down into London but we'll see but you see Darlington may have put us then in the realms of going into Scarborough with this trailer because as I mentioned it's a, it's a customer's trailer or they could just run me all the way back down to Grantham it's Wednesday today isn't it so we get that off Thursday it could be because I presume he's going to want me tipping down here on a Friday somewhere in London it's unusual that he doesn't do that on a Friday right so I'll get um, I'll go over to Gateway, get some fuel, get to Gateway, and then uh, we'll leave from there. Probably not going to put the camera on at Gateway to refer because it's going to be the same load as you've already seen. It's the same um, same time lapse <laughs> as we did yesterday.
set up now, eh? No flies on me. Managed to sort it out. Managed to, uh, the one, the camera facing me is a GoPro 7, the one facing out is a 5, a Hero 4, or 5 or something. Might be a 4, actually. It's before they were waterproof and you had to have it in the waterproof housing. But the waterproof housing is on my bike and I just use it for facing me and then I have my camera on my helmet for facing out when I'm uh, vlogging on the bike. A selfless plug here now. <laughs> if you fancy watching my other channel, uh, which is all about motorbikes really, it's Adam's Life Riding on YouTube. Adam's Life Riding. You can also follow me on Instagram on that as well. I know I'm plugging here like, but <laughs> while we're talking about having the cameras on the bike, I might as well tell you that I do have another channel that I've had for about four to five years. To be honest, it's been difficult these last couple of years to get anything on there, obviously with lockdowns and different things. So there's not many recent videos, but there's some good videos, a couple of camping videos and things like that. If you're interested, if not, don't worry about it. But if you want to go over there and give me a, a like and subscribe and watch a few videos, you're more than welcome. I'd love to have you along on that channel. So yeah, I've managed to, with a couple of little spaces, little foam spaces, because it's a lot narrower, the four, I've managed to put it in um, a Hero 7 case, put it on the window. So we've now got, you can now see where we're going and see my mush. <laughs> Which is better than talking to you and trying to explain the camera's on me and I'm trying to explain where we're going. Or the camera's obviously facing out and I'm talking and you can't see me, it's a bit ignorant, isn't it? So this is how we'll do it from now on. And I'll order off Amazon another case so it's better, so I can leave um I can leave that one on my bike. So we loaded, we're off to Darlington. It's a similar load, it's the same load that we put on on, um, on Tuesday, Tuesday morning. Pave stone load. Um, the only difference this time is the way the pallets, the pallets are free across because they're narrower pallets. And um, they are slightly different in the way they go on. So the, the paved stone runs sideways. So when we throw the strap over, we're already having a plastic cover over it. You don't need the strap, the edge protectors. The other way, when you've got the jagged edge, when you like looking at the pallet and all the, uh, the laid, laid lengthways, then you need the strap protector because the points of each slab, each paving stone, they just pierce straight through the um, the packaging. Uh, sorry, straight through the strap. So this way saves a little bit of time that you don't have to use your strap protectors because it's a nice rounded edge. Plus, like I say, it's got the plastic wrapping that's quite tough that the uh, paved stones wrapped in. So it's, it's never chafed any of my straps. Um, this way anyway. So it's quarter past 11. If I'm going off my, uh, well I think it'll be about six hours to be fair. With a break, you know what I mean? With a with a 45 minute break. Optimistic sat nav is saying four hours, 20 minutes. But, I mean, it's a truck sat nav. And me, what's it truck sat nav? Me Tom Tom, which I've still got under the bed. Might pull it out and start using that again. Me Tom Tom, um, only thing with that is it's not got live traffic on, but to be honest, not very keen on this Garmin. I got this Garmin thing, you know, people have told me, oh, get the Garmin, it's better. I'm a Tom Tom man, I'm afraid. And um, I can't set the speed of the truck. So it seems to calculate the routes 
on the speed limits of the road, which obviously when I'm on a motorway, I'm doing 56 mile an hour. Because that will tell me more or less the same as Google, time-wise, and obviously Google is car times. So if I put an hour on that, that's five hours 20. They reckon something like 10, 15 minutes, an hour to add on. I mean, if it's 10 minutes, it's 40 minutes. If you put, say, 15 minutes, that's an hour on the four hours. So let's say it's four hours 20 plus a break. So you're over six hours. And I honestly believe that's, um, that's about accurate. On a good run with no traffic, six hours from out of Darlington. Which puts me there past closing time. Because on the website it says quarter past five, which is an odd time to finish. But realistically, I'd have to probably turn up there half past three, four o'clock at the very latest to stand the chance of getting a bump for loading me. So that's not happening. So there's no point in me killing myself, vlogging it up here. I'm going to stop, get me dinner and get a, get a shower and get up somewhere within striking distance and parked up tonight ready for the morning ready for Thursday morning get that off and see where we're going from there I mean this could all change any second now the phone could go and it could be drop that in at Grantham <laughs> or you're doing a change over anything anything could happen but I know a colleague of mine has dropped one in at Grantham for Darlington this morning. So what do you think? Is this better then? Well, you can see by motion, you can also see the uh, the road. Could get really technical. I put a green screen behind me, couldn't I? So you just got me, yeah? just got me on there. <laughs> Big green thing behind me. Yeah? I could do it. I've got one actually. Could do it. Just look like a bit of an idiot driving there. Well, the big green circle behind me, <laughs> and then up. Well, obviously, no, it wouldn't really work, would it? Because you've got you can see this side the window. I'd have to put the camera straight facing me, and I'm not getting that technical. Editing's bad enough the way it is. Anyway, I have rambled on for long enough. I'm gonna carry on and then uh, I'll bring you good people back when we get up to Darlington. Unless something happens in between where we get a job change or anything like that. If not, I'll bring you back on when we get to Darlington and uh, let you know where the land lies tomorrow and see if we've got a job for tomorrow. After we've tipped Darlington and uh, Tea. Hi folks, we're now in Darlington. I'm about 200 yard away from my drop. Parts at the side of Usins, but my drop is MKM Builders, which is just at the end of the road. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to start about six o'clock tomorrow. Say so they start at seven. I want to make sure I'm going to pull up to end it road. I'm going to make sure I'm the first one in. Because um, I've got to get down to Grantham from here. And then do a 4 o'clock Nova East. Which is uh, London. Just around near Buckingham Palace. Down the A5. Um, straight down to Hyde Park Corner. Around the back of Buckingham Palace. Straight over Buckingham Palace Road. And the site's on your right there. So I've got to... That's booked in at four o'clock. <laughs> Don't like pushing you, do they? So that's going to be a bit of a. Hopefully, if I can get away from here for eight, probably a bit of Grantham for half ten. Get away from Grantham for midday, I'll get there no problem for four o'clock. So I'm going to get my paperwork done, get me tea, and get to bed. So we've done 536 kilometers today. Not a bad day. Started in London Gateway, went into London, back to London Gateway and up to Darlington. 
Not a bad day. Not a bad day at all. Done a 15 hour day. Dragged it out a little bit. Could have got up here. But I stopped, had some dinner, had a shower. And then stopped again, used the toilet and... Uh, uh, get some, uh, got some fresh milk from the garage, made a brew, and then carried on up. So, not done bad. Not done bad at all. So, anyway, I'm going to uh, call it a night, get me tea, and I'll see you fine people in the morning. Bye for now. Good morning, folks. Welcome to day four, Thursday the 27th of January. Uh, we're actually parked now inside MK and Bill base, waiting to get offloaded. Gates opened at 10 to 7, the guy let me in, let me come round and park in the middle of the yard. The lads are in at half 7, he's not promising anything that I'm going to get loaded straight away because obviously they'll have customers' vans and stuff like that coming in, but at least they're in here, I can get my straps off and I can be ready and waiting for when they come in. Got a free brew, offered me a free brew out the machine. 90% of these build bases always have a coffee machine is always free, which is good of them. Not a bad brew for a coffee machine either. Decent. Right, I'm going to get these straps off and um, we'll bob the camera up when they're offloading. Watch the madness of a builder's yard for a while. And then uh, we'll get down to Grantham. You've got me saying words in my head, filling my mind with these images. Yeah. And it's the way that you look at me, makes me feel like. Right, that's his tip guys. Nine o'clock. Didn't start me till eight. 
when the guy came in, he said, you know, we don't start till eight. <laughs> and I thought, well, you gaffered in there, said half past seven, but fair enough. So it's nine o'clock. I'm reckoning. It's gonna be getting on for midday. By the time I get to Grantham. So, the chances of us being on time at Nova East London are slim to zero. Just coming into Grantham now, um, nine o'clock, to stop and get some fuel and a brew. Feel a lot better. <laughs> Felt a bit groggy this morning and a bit um, on the throat. The night eater on all night, that's what does it sometimes, dries you right out. Um, this rail bridge here is in the top three most struck bridges, bridge strikes in the, uh, in the UK. I've seen it three times um, last year where vehicles were had hit it and were stuck under it. And then a colleague of mine had seen it a couple of times as well, so <laughs> minimum of five times it got struck last year. But I'm pretty sure it would have got struck more times than that. As you come through that tunnel, you can just about make the left turn. We used to do it quite often in um, in the CF, but with this having a higher pod, as you make the left turn, you're on the down curve of the uh, of the next low bridge. So I'm always a bit anxious that you might just catch the uh, wind deflector on the top of this cab, so I don't do it. Just come round the one way and uh, go under it. In the middle there's plenty of clearance, it's 15.6, there's 15 foot on the one that gets uh, hit a lot because obviously that's a main like road back up to the air one so a lot of vehicles use it but it's 15 foot in the middle but it, it, most people hit it when they're over one side they'd get through it if they were in the middle but most people seem to hit it because they stay over to one side don't realise, you must just have a bit of a not concentrate and have a bit of a mental block and forget to move on. They've probably gone through it hundreds of times, but that one time where you just forget about getting in the middle and you hit the bridge. The other one that we're going to go under now, you'd only use that to access the premises that, on that road because it's a dead end. So it doesn't get as much traffic under it, so it doesn't get hit really. But that one gets hit on a regular basis. I'm just going to go under it now. You can see there where there's a bit of someone's roof hanging down where it gets hit on that left hand corner of the bridge. Then you're going to block the road. Cheers mate. Hiya folks, we're now at Grantham, uh, located the trailer, um, as you can see behind me, full load of construction steel, just going to walk around and do my checks, it's an old crappy trailer, <laughs> um, things like that. Two minutes, a couple of seconds to wipe it, but obviously reflector not wiped. Light, look, you can see it, but much better. Wheels have all got uh, indicator markers on. These will all be pointing at each other. So you know these haven't moved. If you get one of these facing up here like that, or down, or, you know you've got loose wheel nuts. So they're quite a good idea. Easy to check. Have a look at your tyre. And they're marking it there, but it's not. It's not going to affect it. I mean, that's an old tyre that cracks in it and everything. 
just a crap trailer. To be honest with you, the company that this trailer belongs to, I don't know how they get away with the state of some of the trailers, I'll be dead honest with you. Crappy repair there, bit of silicon. <laughs> Just change the lens. I mean, look, look at that light. I do not like pulling these trailers, I'll be honest. I don't even know how half of them get for an MOT. That's not a reflector, it's a light. That could be light. We have to have, to have a look at that. So on both sides. We have to let them have a look at that. Come on now. The other side's not on, is it? Let's have another look. One on the headboard. Honestly, I hate, hate pulling these old trailers. I'm gonna have to go and let them have a look at this one. Burnt out, I can see it. Burnt out there. I'm not going to replace it now, because it's, it's not this company's responsibility too. I'm just going to have to mark it down on my sheet as a, as a marker light not working. There's not much else I can do with that. Honestly. Ridiculous state of these fucking trails is ridiculous. Right, I'm gonna get on my way anyway. Well, I'm gonna take it up on the flat, get it chained up, get it ready to roll. We're back on, guys, just coming down now, uh, down Park Lane, Hyde Park's over there, coming down towards uh, Hyde Park Corner, and then we're gonna skirt around Buckingham Palace. Straight over Buckingham Palace Road to the site. I've shown this site, I think, on a previous video. But I know I have. I definitely know I have. Obviously, <laughs> this is a quite affluent part of London. Nice hotels and um, car showrooms and things like that. But it's um, it's the best route into this job. You can stay on the 41. There's a couple of different ways you can do it. But um, A5's a bit, you know, with stop start with roadworks and it's got bus lane all down one side. But for me, it's the most direct route in, and like it's putting us here more or less on time. Well, it's now five to five to four, so it might be a few minutes late. But that's not bad, is it? You know, considering they started tipping us this morning at Darlington. We were about to get unloaded, get down to Grantham, change trailers, 
chain the load, get it secured and ready for transportation. And here we are now, coming up to Hyde Park Corner in London at five to four. Hey, the life of a tramper. <laughs> That's the way it is. I might have got them lights then, but no. It's quite a um, the taxis held back there because I am going to cut that corner off. The only way I can do it. Um, it's five lanes to begin with here, then it goes to four, and everyone's jockeying for position on this. I suppose it is a roundabout type of layout when you look at it, but um, it saves a lot of jockeying for position. And uh, people trying to get the right lane, people are in the wrong lane. It's I just try to stick to the left. To be honest, I don't really like anything on the inside of me. down here, we've got Duke of Wellington Place on the left there, and this wall obviously, of course this, this is always a pain as well, always a bus stop to you, <clears throat> and this wall here is um, the wall of Buckingham Palace. we we'll come round out of Grosvenor Place and then we bear left down to sites and over east. <clears throat> Bresenden Place, I mean the road is actually called, well I know it, yeah that is the road because some of the lads call it Bresenden Place, some call it Nover East. I always call it Nover East because that's the actual building. It looks like we'll be pretty much on time, it's usually quite, uh, quite busy here. Try and get over to the right as we bear left round here. Best we can. Boss is letting me in, thank you very much, pal. Just because when I pull through these lights, I want to pull in to the right. Look at that, I can't believe we're bang on time. <laughs> Pretty impressive, that. I do say so myself. stick my beacons on so they, they can see and they're not get the, grab the attention of these two guys on the gate here oh look swiftly into action that's what I like to see straight in whether we're offloading in this plane or not I'm not sure of what is in the next one. Hey mate, you alright? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you are for other side, you have to wait here. Right. Because they have concrete job there. There is a concrete pump. Right. You will stay here and her will contact you or you contact her. Yeah. Tell them that you are here in loading bay one. 
I don't think I've got a co I don't think I've got a concept number for him. Uh, yes. Uh, oh yeah, we have. Yeah, Neil yes. Beard. Yeah. And uh, they will discuss with you. We'll tell you exactly when they can start to upload. So I'm going in. I'm going in the next one, or? No. Uh, next one is loading bay number two. two. But you are loading bay number three. Oh yeah, I've not been Over in that one. From here, you will go around. We will go. You we will give you a map. Yeah. You will go there and you will go inside, but when this concrete job will, will, will be finished. Okay, yeah, no problem. How many miles did you come? To uh, 120. 120? Yeah. Okay. Tell me please your name. Adam. Thank you. Thank you. Going in loading bay three, never done that one before. So I'm gonna leave my chains, I'm not gonna take anything off because we've got to go out on the road all the way around and come in. Another building down there once they've finished uh, pouring the concrete. Oh, well, I'll um, give me site contact a ring, um, find out what time he's thinking, because we're on time, so really we should be should be getting us in. Hopefully in the next uh, half an hour or so. never die when the world is calling you can you hear them screaming out your name legends never die they become a part of you every time you play for reaching greatness relentless you survive
We're back on guys. <laughs> what an epic that's been. It's now nine o'clock. They finished tipping me at ten to nine. Obviously my time's up at nine o'clock, so we're uh, staying here for the night. So we're stopping in London all night tonight. Leave here early in the morning, get up to Grantham again, drop this trailer, pick another one up, chain that up, and then we're going to Leadenhall Street. So we'll be going to the olden area. Um, and then heading into Leadenhall Street. So, this is where we're at tonight. This is our view. Hopefully this road quietens down a bit. Buckingham Palace and Elizabeth is just uh, <laughs> up the road there. So we're nervous tonight, me and the Queen, me and Queenie. Nervous, eh? Rubbing shoulders with the elite. This job gets you everywhere, doesn't it? <laughs> I'm a stone's throw from a garden. Uh, should walk up and get a pint in bag of nails. But I'm not going to. I'm going to get my curtains round. And I'm going to uh, do a little bit of editing. Because it's going to be an epic to edit. And then I'm going to get to bed. I've had my tea and all that. Chilled out while I've been waiting. Five hours we've been here. Nearly five hours it took them to tip that lot. Crazy. Right, so I'm going to get my head down. Go and walk uh, Lizzie's Corgis in the morning and uh, get on my way. <laughs> Bye for now. See you tomorrow, Friday. Day five. See you in the morning. Back on, uh, we're just leaving now. Leaving in uh, Grantham, forgot where I was for a minute. Eh? Flying load we've got on here. <laughs> two pieces of uh, two pieces of steel. Be rain. Oh mate, all right. Quite long. See, it says the length on here. Assembly dimensions, yeah, they're just over 15 meters, so they're quite long, but two pieces that's all we've got on. Nice, easy load. That Friday flying load, <laughs> we'll get down, um, get down to the olden area. Shouldn't be much off one o'clock, obviously, traffic permitted, we'll be there on time. Get any traffic then. Obviously, we'll have to deal with them delays, but um, we're going, going in straight down uh, A1, A14, M11. Come off um, for the what's it, 406 A13, and heading up up the A13. Right, we're just coming up now to the olden area. Uh, this is it here on the left-hand side. That'll be uh, the van, the first van there. That's Eris's van. Looks like he's just, uh, well, it looks like good time, and that. Looks like he's just told somebody to pull out. Here he is. <laughs> Here's my man. 
<laughs> He's a good lad, Eris. Yeah, so this basically is uh, the olden area, as you can see, there's other trucks in here. And waiting to go to site. So I'll get parked up in position, go down and see him. And he'll ring the lads on site, let them know I'm here. As soon as they're ready for me, I'll be straight in. We are going lead on all side, by the way, as well. Thought we would do with this, um, with these long lengths. It's 20 to 3 now, so we was in the olden area about an hour and a half. But obviously, if I had turned up directly to site, as you'll see as we pull up here, there's nowhere to wait for an hour and a half. So, without that pit lane, You'd have had to either keep circling round for an hour and a half, which ain't feasible, or head out of London. Um, and then make your way back in when they need you. Which again is, you know, it's easier said than done. Might take you an hour and a half, two hours to get back in. Where from that olden area around here, it's a ten minute job. They're only going through that can, aren't they? Searching everything, her baby see out and all sorts of stuff. Searching it as a hell of a lot of coppers. Hang on a minute. Is somebody in. Two in. He definitely says lead and all. He definitely said lead and all. Looks like he's only got one lift on there. One of my colleagues. Doesn't look like he's got much on. I've probably just done done well to get here. <laughs> so, so it took me about 10. What's it took me? 16 minutes it's took me from the pit lane to get here. They're obviously just quite not quite ready for me yet. I won't put the camera up to show this offload, it's only two pieces. You don't see much point. Um, we'll just bob it back on when we're pulling out. My colleague just getting reversed out now. No idea who it is. But once he's out, they'll get me in, no doubt. Yep, there we go. Get me, uh, get me geared off quick, because I'll be ready to get straight on me. That's that complete, the last load of the week, guys. Done. The, um, it's half past three now. I um, made my way out of there. I'm currently on the A1. I'm going to go straight up the A1, I think. 
straight up the air one. Um, half past three. Just thinking about whether I'll get back. No chance really. Got to half past eight and it'll probably take me till half past eight. And obviously need a break on top. I'll fall short, unfortunately. I'll be close, as long as traffic doesn't kill me. <laughs> but Friday traffic, not so bad from here. Um, get on the A1, just keep cracking up the A1. But the A1 will come to a, a standstill at some point. Or it will come very stop start anyway. Whichever way you go, it's Friday afternoon. You know, on a really good run, you might do it four and a half, five hours driving, then throw a break on top. You know, you're getting on for about five and a half, six hours, which obviously takes me well over. It takes me till half past nine, so I reckon I can get within an hour, an hour and a half of the yard, which then should see me all right for getting back before seven to do me 45 hours rest ambulance coming past anyway we'll crack on we'll get somewhere parked up and um, bring you back for a little chat and uh, we'll sign off for the week well we've made it to Stoke um, Friday night we're at Stoke not too far from the yard an hour maybe to the yard um, but it was driving time that I was actually struggling with at the end. Uh, got the 15 minute warning, I'd done 9 hours 45 minutes driving. Um, the driving limit per day is 9 hours, but you can extend to 10 twice a week. So um, obviously I'd extended to 10. Um, to be honest, it was something I hadn't really kept an eye on I thought my um, duty time would run out first but thinking about it we'd run from London up to Grantham which is like a good three hour drive then back down to London obviously another three hour drive so you're on six and then we're coming obviously you've got the time from the olden area to site you've got movement on site movement on site um, at Grantham and then obviously starting to run up here I've done four hours seven minutes up here so um, obviously it's probably a little bit less than three hours running up and down but not by much from um, from Grantham to London depending on where you're going so yeah nine hours 58 minutes two minutes left of a 10 hour drive I've got a little spot in stock when you come off, come down the A500, but it's another five minutes or so away from here, so I wouldn't have made it. But we're part now for the night. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this format of cramming up everything into a week. I'm not going to put the cameras on in the morning, because it'll be early, it'll be pitch black. I'm just going to get back to the yard, um, you know, wash the truck off, get my paper put in, download my digicard and get myself off home so I'm going to start to edit this video tonight um, so yeah I, I thank you all for watching I hope you've stuck with the, if you've stuck with the video so far then uh, <laughs> well done because obviously it's probably quite a repetitive thing in it to see uh, me going up and down from London and back but hopefully they'll improve, you know, hopefully this format of um, doing a weekly video will improve. I'll try and uh, get better camera angles, do a bit more filming um, of getting the load restraints on and things like that. It's just, at the moment, it's quite difficult with it being dark a lot of the time when we're setting off in the morning and then late at night. Can't put the cameras on when I'm travelling because got to have the interior light on and then... Obviously, if you're doing anything outside in the dark, 
it's not going to be the best uh, visibility so we'll uh we'll try and improve the video formats moving forward as well for these um these obviously like weekly vlogs westy weeklies but as for the other um the other format i think we'll keep that pretty much the same where uh, we just record a decent day getting the load on showing you what the load is showing you how it gets offloaded on a time lapse and then um, obviously see where we go from there for a back load and things like that so i'm gonna sign off i'm gonna do my paperwork get some tea start editing this video right so that just leaves me really to sign off here now thank you all for watching i hope you've enjoyed this new format i hope you've enjoyed this uh westy weekly um you all stay safe be good be kind and i'll catch you all in the next one bye for now